I've always been fascinated and inspired by nature. It captures your imagination. It's the stuff of life and it's the stuff that is necessary to keep everything on this planet alive. At his lab in the Swiss city of Zurich, Thomas Crowther is trying to chart a course to a more sustainable world by engaging in the ancient human endeavor of map making. I use maps all the time to plot out a hiking path or to find a cool new restaurant, but how can a map or mapping in general help fight climate change? Maps are fantastic tools because they help us to provide context, but we are still totally disconnected from nature. We still don't know the size of our garden, let alone how much carbon is stored in there and the species that can exist naturally there. Maps provide an incredible way for us to link to nature, to understand where we fit into the global picture and to understand where our contributions can make a difference. Contributions, including a study his team published in 2015 in science journal Nature, estimating that there are 3.04 trillion trees on the planet. The first global model of Earth's tree density ignited conversations about the potential of trees to draw down carbon from the atmosphere, but critics in the scientific community said it lacked nuance and questioned the numbers. I don't think I would have done anything differently, but obviously every global scale study comes with huge uncertainties and limitations and challenges. And so that initial work sort of set in place the foundation on which we can build loads of future research and collaborations that can help to refine that understanding of the Earth system. Today, as a professor at ETH Zurich, a university in Switzerland, Crowther is leading a team of researchers as they employ the tools of satellite imagery, machine learning, and artificial intelligence to map entire ecosystems. The ultimate goal, to combat biodiversity loss and climate change. The work that you do at Crowther Lab is looking at nature from a very macro perspective. Why is it important to map all living things, flora and fauna, on our planet? So one core basic element of ecology is that every single species depends on other species to survive. And that means when you look at an ecosystem with only one species in your perspective, you miss the full network of interactions that's necessary to keep the ecosystems alive. And that's why we take a very holistic approach. In 2020, Crowther announced Restore, a new online platform to connect conservationists with local restoration efforts and empower them with big data. Restore is designed to empower the tens of thousands of projects around the world who are conserving, restoring, or farming to improve nature and biodiversity to capture carbon from the atmosphere. And we do that by providing ecological information from maps that can help them to understand which species are native in those regions and which mixtures will capture the carbon in the most sustainable way. This application was Restore really makes the, the impact our work has here so much bigger. With Restore, we can actually reach a lot of people and maybe actually make a difference, and that, that's huge. In a forest overlooking Zurich, a species of oak is being regenerated. This site is one of more than 50,000 that the Restore platform tracks, gathering data points like the area's local plant species, climate, and carbon storage potential. In June 2021, the United Nations launched the Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, calling on countries to meet their commitments to restore 1 billion hectares of degraded land over the next 10 years. That's an area roughly the size of China. Restoration is in the spotlight like never before. And I think it really is because there is this recognition that we have really destroyed a lot of the world's ecosystems and that's really having negative consequences we live on a damaged planet. Do you really think that we can actually help restore it? I fundamentally believe that we can start to stop the devastating extent of land degradation that we're seeing today, and we can start to tip the balance in the other direction to stop the losses and start the repair of ecosystems across the globe.